Also, mark the center of each of your leader cloths. You should allow several inches on each side of the rail to be free from fabric and your leaders so that you have ample room to access your bobbin while you're quilting. All of your leader cloths will be attached to the Velcro facing in like this. The narrowest set goes on the take-up rail. That's the rail located to the back of the machine. Check to make sure that when you rotate that rail, it rotates towards the center. The front top rail is called the backing rail. This rail should rotate away from the center. The medium leader is attached to this rail. The rail below that is the quilt top rail, and it rotates toward the center. The bottom rail is your batting rail. Loosely roll the batting onto the bottom rail, or just let it hang for a small quilt. There is no need to firmly attach the batting to the rail. When planning for the correct amount of fabric for your quilt backing and batting, always allow about 12 inches extra backing and batting in the length and about three additional inches on each side. Once your fabric is loaded, it's a good time to take a look at the height of your rails. Initially, most of your fabric will start on the backing rail. As you quilt your fabric and roll it up on the take-up rail, the take-up rail will get fatter and will take up more space in the throat of your machine. On the side of your rails, there are knobs that you can loosen and slide the rail up or down as needed. These lines on the side are reference points for checking that you have moved each end the same amount. At all times, you're trying to achieve a flat surface upon which to stitch. You will also want to keep your fabric barely a finger's width off the top of the bed of your machine. Our next step is to baste the fabric in place across the top and down one side of the quilt. The basting at the top will anchor our fabric in place and basting down the sides as we go ensures that the fabric doesn't pull towards the side. Here's where we'll get a chance to check our tension for the first time. Make sure that you have balanced your bobbin tension before you make any adjustments to the top tension. The bobbin tension is the basis for the top tension and must be calibrated first. Stitch a little to the side to check your tension and adjust according. To bring up your bobbin thread, use your right hand to touch the needle down button while holding onto your needle thread with your left hand. Touch the needle up button again and pull your bobbin thread. Make sure both threads are under the hopping foot. Take a few stitches to set the thread and then trim the rest of the thread. Now we're going to baste our layers in place. Your machine will walk slowly while holding the needle up and down button. Baste across the top of the quilt and as far as you can go down your right hand side. Now we're ready for the fun part. As you arrow through the display, you can see the options you have for setup. Options for lighting, setting the needle to stop up or down, and what mode you want to quilt in. You have the option of quilting in the regulated or manual mode. In your instruction manual, you can see an explanation for all of your options. The manual mode setting means that the machine will run at a constant speed while I move the machine. When first starting out, it's a good idea to start the machine at a medium speed until you become accustomed to how the machine handles. A good speed for me is about 70%. It's easy to speed up or slow down using the plus and minus buttons on the handlebars. When I free motion, I like to use the manual mode. Manual mode allows me to run the jewel at a speed preset by me. I can speed up or slow down as I'm going by using the controls on the handlebars. All it takes is a little practice to get good at making some great continuous shapes like gentle curves, swirls, and even stars. Working in the regulated mode is especially nice when you're following a pattern and want to allow the machine's speed to increase or decrease with your movement. You can select a preset stitch length anywhere from 4 to 15 stitches per inch. We're going to pound some chalk on our quilt, and while the machine's in regulated mode, I'm going to follow it. The use of a quilt pounce allows us to mark our quilt top as we go, and since there's so many options of quilt stencils, it's easy to find just the right size.
for quilters just starting out, you might like the precision and ease that can be found by using one of the many template boards that are offered for use with the jewel. When we use templates, we'll stand at the back of the machine. Use the optional stylus and follow along the many different patterns offered for great all over, border, or block quilting. Using templates is the perfect time to use your stitch regulator. The Baby Lock Jewel also comes equipped with a laser that will allow me to use pantographs. Pantographs are patterns that you follow using your laser. The mount for the laser can be attached directly to the clip on your stylus, or you can attach it to one of your thread stands. By clipping a channel lock on the wheels of your jewel, you can be sure to get great straight stitches. For real creativity, you'll want to get a ruler base for your jewel. It offers stability to your rulers when you really want to explore just how great your machine quilting can get. Be sure to get rulers that are exactly one quarter of an inch thick. This will allow you to get close to your hopping foot without damaging your machine or your ruler. A horizontal spool pin is an absolute must for metallic threads. With the holder, your thread will glide through your fabric. Your new Baby Lock Jewel is a gem of a machine that will truly make finishing your quilt the best part about quilting. And we have lots of tools and accessories to help you get greater enjoyment out of your machine. Be sure to talk to your authorized Baby Lock dealer about any of the wonderful quilting accessories you've seen demonstrated today. Your Baby Lock dealer will also have available for you additional cluster lights if you'd like to add extra lighting to your machine, extra bobbins since five bobbins could never be enough, and extra needles to keep you sewing without interruption. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know your Baby Lock Jewel with me. Happy quilting!